guys, Colin here. You're probably all aware that this is a flute, and if you blow across the hole at this end, it generates a sound. But the science and technique behind how a flute functions might be a little less obvious. <laughs> To get an idea of how a flute works, let's take a step back and see what qualifies as a flute. Technically, any instrument where air is blown across an opening to generate a note can be classified as a flute. Flutes can be side-blown, like this orchestral flute, end-blown, like pan pipes, or make use of a fipple, which channels air across an opening as seen in recorders. This qualifies even a referee's whistle as a flute. In all these instruments, one thing is common. A stream of air is passed across an opening and directed onto the sharp edge on the other side. This splits the airstream, causing some of it to enter the flute. Interestingly, the airstream doesn't split nicely in half, but it oscillates, sometimes going in and sometimes going out. The oscillating airstream within the flute sets up a standing wave, causing resonance at a frequency dictated by the length of the air column. Longer tubes produce lower notes, and shorter tubes produce higher notes. This can be most effectively demonstrated using pan pipes, which use multiple fixed length tubes to achieve a range of notes. However, by drilling holes at specific lengths along a single tube, we can make the flute achieve multiple notes by using our fingers to cover the holes. This Indian bamboo flute is the simplest form of transverse or side-blown flute. With all the holes open, we achieve the highest note, and by covering them one by one, we can descend down the scale. Flutes aren't just limited to one octave, however. Once we've reached the highest note, it's possible to go higher still by fingering all the holes closed again and increasing the airflow across the embouchure. By increasing the airflow, we force the standing wave inside the flute to double in frequency, raising it by an octave. Moreover, cross-fingering allows easier access to existing notes or to notes that usually aren't accessible. This is achieved by opening holes upstream and leaving the ones downstream fingered. This can be seen in the following example where notes outside the simple scale are achieved by cross-fingering. Flutes like this orchestral flute offer more note options by closing multiple holes using single keys or by opening or closing holes that would be out of the reach of fingers on a simple keyless flute. Much of the rest of the musical workings of a flute come down to technique. Tonguing is used to add definition between notes and is accomplished by using the tongue to briefly stop the airflow, leaving the player's lips. An extension of this is flutter tonguing or trill tonguing, where the player rapidly trills their tongue in order to produce a stuttering sound, which can be used as either a tonal effect or as a rhythmic device. Playing notes in a single stream of air without tonguing produces a smooth legato, and by manipulating the airstream across a sustained note, it's possible to produce vibrato. Some more exotic techniques involve overblowing to the point of getting the flute to squeal and generating a vocal humming note alongside the stream of air to either match or harmonise with the note being played on the flute. Hopefully that's given you some insight into how a flute works and how its techniques are achieved. 
If you like this video, you might want to consider subscribing as I've got more flute videos coming out soon. You also might want to check out my sister channel, CS Guitars, for all the science of guitars. But that's all for now, guys. Keep it flute, and I'll see you later.